Welcome, welcome, welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this 26 nozzler on an older Savage Action. So let's hop into the workshop and we'll get started on the video. Okay, as the title says, I am building an overboard 6.5 millimeter cartridge. Um, this one's been a test of patience. I wanted to do this uh, without breaking the bank, basically. So I'll show you my list over here of me working through a bit of a checklist to what I needed to find to be able to do this in an affordable way. Um, I'll bring it over and we'll go over it. Yeah, still got me a little camera. <laughs> Good. Um, so I needed to, uh, I wanted to purchase a Magnum Savage Action. So, but I didn't want to pay too much for it. So I've got that. I needed to purchase a Savage Accu stock, just the stock by itself. And I wanted to do that second hand, which was very difficult and took me a long time to find. But I got one of those now. I wanted to purchase the 26 nozzle dies and brass which was quite easy because no one wants it. <laughs> I wanted to, uh, I needed to purchase a six and a half mil barrel, which I've got now, I'll show you that soon. Purchase projectiles, 6.5 mil projectiles. Uh, I've got 147 ELD match, which I'll see how they go with fouling and things like that. If, um, but I might actually go out and grab a box of 156 burger um, out of limit the elite outer limits and see how they go as well um, and then I've done here basically tonight I'm just going to be uh, I've cleaned the action up that's all nicely cleaned I'll show you that soon too and I'm about to go and find the lands of that uh, new chambering and I can show you how I'm going to do that find the lands because I want to start my load development kind of 15 thousandths off those lands um, so this is not your standard 26 nozzler that's limited to 3.34 overall length, I believe. Um, I'll show you how I'm going to build this because I really, like if I was going to do it, I didn't want to spend a lot of money on the rifle. <clears throat> but if I was going to do it, I was going to do it properly. And I also wanted to build on a particular action that if I cook the barrel in like two or three, 300 rounds, that I can actually just put whatever barrel I want on there. So it's actually a 338 Lapua uh, Magnum action length um, so that I can just change the plan, I can swap the barrels out, whatever I want to do. So um, I'll bring you over to the actual rifle, I'll go over, you, go over what I purchased and um, run you through the process of how I'm going to build it. Um, I, what I've done here is I write a little list of how I want things ordered because like I don't want to send the bolt away for fluting, but forget to find my lands. And it's like, oh, the bolt's gone for like two or three weeks, and I can't actually start my load development or my ladder testing, should I say. Um, so, yeah, I just write it all down so I know exactly, yep, cool, done that, got that, got that, and I know what I need to purchase if there's going to be a delay. Okay, so here's the rifle here. This is not how it came assembled, not at all. In fact, it came with this on it which is just a piece of plastic and it's kind of weird so you can actually I don't know if you can see that they put lead someone's put lead in the front to probably to stop that foreign from jumping up so much um, I guess it's kind of free and it's all good whatever you're into so yeah this is heavy and um, plasticky and yep take that off get rid of that so I've pulled that off the action obviously and it came with this <clears throat> came with this and this is a seven millimeter Remington Magnum barrel and it is in very poor condition it has not been well looked after at all not at all so pulled that off um, which means basically I got the action and the bolt. Here's the bolt here. Um, bolt's really good. Really, really good. So that's going down for fluting, just because it's basic. And I'll get this hollowed out as well, just to make it a bit more modern. And that's gonna, that'll go down for fluting. And once that comes back, I'll 
tidy it all up and oil it really well. But yeah, there's no, like, there's no, uh, uh, there's no dodgy stuff going on in the um, bolt face or anything. No pitting or nothing. It's, looks like it's never blown a primer out on it. So um, yeah, it's really good. So that's that's that. So the bolt and the action, basically, uh, and the trigger. It's got an old school trigger. I'll just I'll grab it because it matters. <clears throat> so basically, this is like their new triggers called the Accu Trigger, and they suck. I hate them. I usually rip the safety stuff out of them because when you uh, lighten them down. Um, the safety goes off every time you try and use it. So my other Savage over there, oh, you can't even see that. My other Savage over here, that trigger down there, that is a Timney trigger, and that's much better than any Accu trigger will ever be. Um, but this trigger here, this is an old school one. And this is actually, when they were making triggers like well, this is actually a really lovely trigger. <laughs> no it wasn't, it was great until I had to put it back in the rifle and what a mission. So instead I bought a jarred drop-in trigger and replaced it. So for this rifle I've got, um, here's the, well I'll go over what I've changed, because <laughs> it matters. This is the standard uh, 7mm rem mag uh, magazine box and there's nothing wrong with this to build a 27, uh, 26 nozzler on it, but <clears throat> this is why I wouldn't build one on a Tika, because you have this problem, and Tika actions are really not that, probably a little bit small, but there you go, I don't know if you can read that, but that has quite a long overall length already at nearly, it's 3.47, um, so that just means that I can, even for a 7mm rim mag, that's you be, you know you can seat that bullet out a bit further and get some nice speeds um, so but in terms of this what I've actually purchased here is a 338 Lapua stock um, which basically means this action uh, if I measure this here oh come on baby just play the game there you go, there's my overall length. So I've got a very, very long magazine for this particular rifle, which means if I want to build whatever after this 26 nozzle barrel was shot out, <laughs> uh, I can build whatever I want in a magnum action, uh, unless I go to a, ca a case, you know, the rear of a case that doesn't actually fit the bolt face. So that's really cool. Um, basically I picked up the stock after looking and looking and looking and looking and purchased it so the action and the stock um, were well under a thousand dollars for both of them with the magazine um, which I think is good really good and then the barrel obviously well the barrels not obvious should I say um, the barrel has started off it's a one, there's a, there's, a, there's a method behind this madness. Um, this has actually got 6.5 Creedmoor engraved on that barrel, uh, which is going to come off and get re-engraved, obviously. But basically, this has a one and seven and a half twist. So I wanted to build this because I have a hunch that there's going to be heavier and heavier bullets, projectiles, coming out in the future, in the near future, and I want to be able to make the most of getting into all of those different projectiles. So that's a 6.5 Creedmoor that has been re-chambered. Now I wouldn't recommend doing that to every single barrel, but basically the Criterion barrels, if you look <clears throat> at the standard barrel that came off this, it, they leave a lot more tenon than a standard factory barrel so rechambering them is quite good and you can also turn that barrel back again and rechamber it again and you'll be you'll be sweet 
uh, you'll still be, you know, say if you get a bit of throat erosion, you'll be cool. But uh, I guess with the long, super, super long magazine and action, like I can just chase my lands and just chase them until they're gone. <laughs> so I'll show you the 26 nozzler put into there. You can see that right there. There's, and that's not even Sammy spec. Um, this Hornady ATAP is set at about, it's set at 3.445. So that's really, really long. Um, what it means is, I'll get a ELDM. What it means is basically when I come to, I'll just bring it in a bit closer. When I actually come to like load my projectile, I can load just below the donut there. And I'm, I'm, I'm really still in the magazine. If it's a 156 burger, I've got a massive overall length that I can load to um, with the free bore as well. So should be a really good 26 nozzler. Um, should be a really good 26 nozzler. So there you go, that's the blurb. So I'm on a 24 inch barrel. Um, for now I'm not going to suppress it. I'm going to be trying this powder here, the US869, which is a 50 BMG powder. Um, it's also good in the 30, 378 and 300 rum. Um, <clears throat> in terms of brass, I will be using these. So this is the Nosler, the actual Nosler cases. So I'll be interested to see how that brass goes. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna just go absolutely mental with it. I'm just gonna run um, fairly kind loads, uh, just because it's it's gonna be going so fast already that um, I don't think I need to to crank it up, basically. But yeah, there's a few things I do need to do that are a little trickier than usual, like the recoil lug uh, on this action here on the older Savage is actually a little bit too wide. So I need to choose whether I actually shim down the recoil lug so it comes in um, because the stock, excuse me, calipers, I don't want to bend you. The stock uh, actually has this aluminium rail which runs right along through here, <clears throat> which is really good because it's nice and stiff but a light way of doing it. And basically I have to choose whether I chamfer out the aluminium in here or I reshape the recoil lug. Not sure yet, I have to figure that out. So yeah, but this is nice. Really, really, this is going to be a really nice rifle. Why are you not going in? There we go. So there you go. That's uh, how it all sits. Magazine hanging out the bottom. Yes, I know. Um, I've actually checked the balance of the rifle if I can carry it there with the barrel. And it actually balances perfectly right there under, that, under the set screw. So I'm happy with that. Because I was a bit worried that I wanted to have my hand here. Um, but <clears throat> no, that should be really good. So this is the rifle all assembled and fully painted. You can see the bolts fluted as well. Topped with my Barris Signature 5 to 25 by 50. And a 20 MOA rail ready to go to the range for the first time. G'day guys. <clears throat> out here at the range today with a couple of rifles. Uh, got my 26 nozzler here, which I just put the first shot through it and first two shots. <gasps> oh, that's a big bang. <laughs> that's a big bang. Like, I feel like it's worse than my 300 rum. Not the fact that it kicks, just it's just a massive bang. It's just going so fast. And you, the struggle I'm getting is it's raining quite badly. Of course I book, book, the, book the place on the worst day of the week. They're like 
sunshine for the last 10 days. <laughs> but so my chronograph's not really liking that. So I'll probably I need to, I want to get one speed reading, a uh, couple of speed readings on each rifle, but I just I'll set up plastic and all sorts of stuff and it's just not working out. Yeah, so right, I'm gonna put a, another two shots through the 26 nozzler. Eat your plugs and muffs as well. Yeah. It's looking really good though. Like it's not pressure sensitive with that 50 BMG powder. Um, it's the first time I've got on the board, so I'm gonna let this cool cool right off and give them about 10 minutes between shots. So they're like true cold bore shots. Um, I think I might do I just really want to try and, nah, I'm not going to try and do speed today. Velocity. So no, I just won't get it because my chronograph's wet, so. So yeah. It's like a, sort of like a, if I had to compare it to someone at something, it's like a, it is, feels very overboard, like the amount of noise there is. But there's a real crack to it as well. I think it's because that bullet, that projectile is going like really fast. So it's sort of like, <clears throat> kicks like a 7mm remag, maybe a little more with a 180 grain or something. Um, but just sounds like a 338. It's just, just really interesting. <clears throat> Alright, I'm just going to walk up to the target now. The, uh, I did a bit of a dumb thing. I always do something dumb. I left the tiny little Allen key for the scope turret on the Burris. I left it in my other range box, didn't I? So I can actually zero or get my get my 26 nozzle bore sighted properly. So it was shooting, I don't know, 20 inches high. That's dumb. So basically means I only got th three out of nine shots actually on the page because I was figuring out with holdovers where it was heading. <laughs> That's not very clever. I'll admit that. You always got to forget something, right? You do something important. Yeah. So, so, I'll show you this. I'll show, <laughs> I'll show you what I was aiming at. Yeah, this is how I figured out where the actual 26. I don't know if you can see that. But that's where the 270's hitting. The 26 nozzle is up here. Oh, shoot, hitting the ground. So, what I did is I put a Put a stick in the ground, about an inch diameter, stabbed it in the ground at the right height, and I got on the box. So I'll show you this. This is my stick where I was aiming with the 26 nozzler. Um, and it shot, th so I just started hitting the box here. So one shot would, there you go. This is actually quite good. She's a bit rangy, she's a bit rough. But you can see here, actually see there it's a shot that skimmed the box and there's a shot next to it that's probably quite a good group uh, but anyway that's when I first got on the box and this is my group shooting at the stick 
here three shots. I just did them in quick succession, so it's about uh, it's 23 millimeters. 23 mils. Oh, this is the 270 wisdom here. I'm gonna shoot two more shots through it, but it's really hot. This is the 270 wisdom again. Um, I stopped that group because it wasn't that good. Take that with me. Mm. Ah, yeah, so. It's not that good. All right, back down to the car. Okay, so here's my loading sheet for the 26 Nosler. Uh, if you're interested, I'm running. I just don't have a speed, but I'll get that next time when it's actually sunny. Uh, one in seven and a half twist. 24 inch barrel, nozzle case, the LDM, US 869. And I'm also running a 338 Lapua Magnum action length. Because I just wanted to like, I just have a hunch that the 6.5s so are going to carry on with coming out with 160 grain bullets and all sorts of stuff. So uh, my lands are at 3.48 and that's just a semi spec chambering. There's no free bore put in there or anything picking it'll make its own free bore as, <laughs> as I go through the shots. So I'm running ten thousandths off the lands um, and my best, the only group that I actually got to record um, I know my 87.5 was probably two shots into same sort of thing but yeah, I'll, I'll do it a bit better next time. Um, but yeah 87.8 grains which just, if you're going to load that don't load that into a straight Sammy spec 26 nozzler because it, that's this is a this is one that's basically 180 thousandths longer than the normal normal 26 but yeah 23 mil group three shots and they were just probably on like a warmer barrel in quick succession so i'm pretty stoked actually um i'll bring it up i'll bring it up off the ground happy to be honest because <clears throat> like this rifle has been mucked around, well not mucked around with, it's just been, you know, it's got, this was quite an old <clears throat> Savage uh, 110 action, like, I don't know, it's, it's pretty old, um, it was started as a 7mm rim mag, and then, yeah, I got the stock, uh, so it's running a 20 MOA rail as well, um, some Steiner rings and my Barris um, like what is it? Barris signature um, but the stock is a Savage uh, 338 Lapua mag stock um, so you can see there that's got a massive 338 Lapua mag um, magazine so basically the recoil lug needed to be reshaped to fit into that aluminium uh, pillar bedding system so I was a little bit concerned um, that it wasn't going to like me doing that so but it, it seems seems to be okay so one thing I really did notice which is you won't be able to see it but no you won't be able to see that but basically um, I have noticed a little bit of copper in the end of the barrel already and that's only after 10 shots and apparently that is the reputation they have these big 20 these big 264 uh you know the big 26 nozzlers and 28 nozzler um is you really need to be keeping an eye on the copper fouling in them so i'll actually take this back to the shop again back to my workshop and run a Bortec through it straight away um just because yeah if you start fouling them up and you start raising your pressure and they start uh, getting into problems so you look after them they're all good so this will never go on the range like it's just a hunt it'll be a hunting rifle I'm building it to sh to hit tar down south so um, yeah should be really good I love the 26 as well the 264s because you just get you know, extremely good wind resistance with those projectiles, and I would find like with because the recoil is not atrocious, which it's not. I think it's still up. I don't know how many foot pounds it is, but <clears throat> um, with a good stock design and stuff, it's it's really good. 
you do get a sometimes get a follow-up shot as well so so yeah um really cool rifle really cool rifle it's big like be great for hunting around here kind of thing like farmland and and that I'll, I'll take it into the public land as well just to probably test it out on goats just to make sure everything's working how it should so yeah 147 ELD match um, most probably traveling around 3200 feet per second so that's the last rifle that I had shooting a 147 ELD match was a PRC and that was shooting at 2980 um, and that, that was really cool but, um, I never really took game out far with that rifle <clears throat> I took game out with a short barreled 6.5284 um, although I was shooting goats 750, 760 yards with that and that was only going like 2800 out of a 19 inch barrel so fishing this thing should have another 300 yards of ease on it so yeah I feel pretty good Nine, 900,000 yards um, should be really good <laughs>